Well, maybe you recognize that animal, but I'm guessing not. So you're probably wondering, was that some weird starfish or an octopus from the bottom of the ocean? Or maybe you're wondering if that was an alien from outer space? Well, that was a starnose mole filmed very close up in very slow motion as it located and ate a little tiny morsel on a glass plate. So hey everyone, I'm Ken Catania, and this movie is a companion to my recent book on the art and craft of doing science. And I'm going to tell you more about starnose moles. They're one of my favorite creatures. They're very fascinating, and they have a very interesting sensory system. And the first thing I want to do is show you a more zoomed out view in real time of a starnose mole finding and eating some small morsels on a glass plate. And you're going to see a penny in the screen to give you some scale. So that at least was a little more zoomed out, and I hope you could appreciate that starnose moles are super fast in the way that they find food and eat food. In fact, they're in the Guinness Book of World Records as the fastest foraging mammals. And that is possible because of that amazing star. And I want to point out that the star is not used for the sense of smell. It's a skin surface, like the skin of your own nose. Your own tip of your nose is not used for smell. The olfactory receptors are back in your nasal cavity, and the same is true for star-nosed moles. But the touch side of the star is incredible. And what I'm going to do next is take you on a microscopic journey to show you the little tiny sensory organs that compose the star. So we're going to start with a photo of the star-nosed mole and slowly zoom in on the star. So the star is made up of these 22 appendages that ring the nostrils. The nostrils are those little depressions in the center of the star. And from here, we're going to move to the scanning electron microscope. Under the microscope, you can really make out the fine structure of the skin surface of the star. And you'll notice that each one of these appendages is completely covered with this honeycomb pattern of little tiny domes. Those domes are Imer's organs and they're sensitive to the very slightest touch. Each of those Imer's organs has a little circle in the center of it, and that circle is the top of a column of skin cells, and within that column of skin cells, there's a series of nerve endings, and you're able to see those nerve endings in the last image here where they've been stained with a fluorescent dye and they form this beautiful hub-and-spoke pattern under that little circle in each of the Imer's organs. Now just to put some numbers on all this while we zoom back out, there are 25,000 Imer's organs on the star, and the star is supplied by 100,000 nerve fibers. That's more than five times the number of nerve fibers that supply the human hand, and our hands are very sensitive to touch. Well, I hope that microscopic view of the star-nosed mole's nose helped you appreciate just how extraordinary this animal's sense of touch is. Star-nosed moles may well have the best sense of touch of any animal on the planet. There's a lot more that could be said and shown about that, but if you're following along in the book, you'll know I have some ulterior motives for showing you some of these views. What I really wanted to tell you about is the fact that in the course of collecting data and doing science, if you search for artistic and aesthetic and beautiful views of your study system, that may well be another path to discovery. That has very often happened in the course of my studies, and it certainly happened in this case as well. So to tell you about that, I want you to take a look at the Starnos mole under the scanning scope again. And when I took those images, I could have just zoomed in really tightly on the Imer's organs, because that was really the thing that was of most interest. Instead, I tried to get a dramatic view of the entire star, and I succeeded ultimately. In the course of doing that, I noticed something. What I noticed is that between each of the appendages where they join at the base around the nostrils, there is a strip of tissue where there are no Imer's organs. And that means each appendage is kind of a separate sensory unit. And that, in turn, reminded me about something in mammal brains that can be seen once in a while, and that's very special. Now, to tell you about that, I'm going to turn to a model of the human neocortex and basically point out that all mammals, including humans and star-nosed moles, 
have an area where touch information is processed in each hemisphere of the neocortex that runs from the midline to more laterally. Now usually those kinds of maps have to be identified by recording neural activity, but in some few cases you can actually see the map in the cortical anatomy, and that's really extraordinary. One very well-known case is in rodents, rats and mice, where you can see the pattern in the brain where the whisker information is processed. So if you look at this bit of anatomy that I'm showing you down here and you see this dark area in the center, that set of circles is actually representing the map of where the whiskers from the rodent face project their information about touch and where the brain area processes that touch information from the whiskers. I think this is one of the most amazing kinds of anatomical aspects of brain organization that has ever been described. And what's interesting about that is, of course, the whiskers are these very separate units on the mouse face. So it's maybe not surprising that the map is reflected as separate units. And having seen that the appendages of the star are separate sensory units while trying to get that really kind of aesthetic view of the star, suggested to me that maybe the same thing could be going on in star-nosed moles. And sure enough, that turned out to be the case. So if you look at this star-nosed mole neocortex, you'll see a series of stripes in the cortex, and I'm gonna zoom in on that. Now it turns out that only half of the body is represented in each hemisphere, so you only see 11 stripes on one hemisphere and the other 11 appendages are represented on the other side of the brain. So that was a really exciting discovery. Here was another example of a place where you could literally see in the anatomy of the brain the area where touch information is processed, a visible brain map. And as often happens in science, that discovery led to many more questions, puzzles, insights, and from there, other discoveries. So the investigations continue. But that's not the important part of the story that I wanted to get across. As you've already read, if you're following along in the book or in the previous videos, one of the most important things for making discoveries is focusing your attention. One way to do that is by working on scientific puzzles. Another way to do that is to search for artistic and aesthetic views of your data. When you do that, you can't help but be focused for long periods of time on your study system. And often, you can combine those two things where you're both trying to solve a puzzle and also searching for beauty in your study system. And that can be a particularly powerful way of focusing your attention and leading to additional discoveries. So speaking of aesthetic views of a study system, I will now leave you with some additional views of star-nosed moles.